This video is going to help you with continuation of activity 5.5a and creating the whole block model that you will go through and use to learn about various features within, uh, within Inventor about creating different types of holes and what are some of the different options that you have available. One thing we'll take a look at is that as you scroll down through and you take a look at the document is you're going to see you've got a circular object, solid object, and we're going to go through and place five different types of holes within this particular object as well. So as we go through and and take a look at the print that's on page four, you know some things we'll need to take a look at is there's a lot of different dimensions in here which can be a little confusing at times but we're gonna go through and start looking at starting at the first point which is creating that circular part as well. So we got a four inch diameter part that's just the outside one, it's the largest dimension that is placed on this print which kind of gives you an indication that this is going to be the main body of the part that we're creating and then over here on the right side view they're going to go through and show you that, that it's going to be extruded dimension of 1.5 now as you take a look um, this part here is going to be laying down kind of like so which is going to kind of change our different scenario from what work plane we choose in Inventor so typically you know I always show we usually start with the XY plane but in this case when we go through and we look at this particular part we can go through and take a look at if we create it is the the flat face or the circular face is going to be facing toward us so I'm going to choose the XZ plane and then one thing that the XZ plane does is if you take a look sometimes the view cube kind of gets turned around see how the top is facing uh, you know as you read it it's kind of turned sideways I'm going to use the little arrows up here in the corner to turn it so that way I see top as it would normally be reading from left to right. I'm going to choose the circle tool from the origin, draw out a circle to be four inches, and then I can go through and I'm going to finish the sketch. So you'll notice the orientation of the circle changes from previous models we've created. I'm going to extrude and it's going to be extruded to 1.5 thickness as we look at that. So as I click on the home button it will kind of center it up for us and then I can take a look at well what are some of the things we need to have well we create the circular plate as they go through and note for us and then they want us to go through and take a look at here we can we're going to set in points along here and we're going to circular pattern these points in a new sketch so it'll be 1.25 away from the center if I click on uh, start 2d sketch and choose the top of my circular plate I'm going to go through and click on point and then I'm going to set a point right directly in line vertically with the center point of the origin on the new sketch and then I'm going to dimension from the center point to the origin point to be 1.25 just like how they have in, in the print now in order to circular pattern the the points around I'm going to click on circular choose the geometry I want which in this case is the point and then for the axis I'm going to choose the red arrow to select what axis that I want and if you notice you know most of the time we would cl click on the outside ring of the circle but I can also click on the origin point and it will go through and know that that will be patterned around we're only going to have five points to be patterned around so I'm going to change that to five and then I'm going to click OK and it will go through and set those in I'm going to say finish sketch our points are set in there for our usage and we'll go through and take a look at some some of the parts. So as you scroll down through here, the, they show you some of the different features and what kinds of dimensions you need to put in here. So the very top one, it's just going to be a simple through hole as if you went through and you took a regular drill bit and drilled down into the material. And it's going to have a, and it's going to drill all the way through the part and going to go through and have a diameter of 0.25. So it'll be a quarter inch diameter. I'm going to go through and choose the hole tool. But before I do that, here's what will happen when I choose hole it'll pick up all five of these and say that we want to make them all the same well in this case we don't so I'm gonna say cancel I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard and I'm gonna click just the one point to select it and then use the hole feature now when I have that one point just selected it will only select the point that I had I had clicked on rather than going through and showing all five of those as well so through hole just as they go through and have it um, as far as distance I will say through all and then by default it automatically defaults our, our diameter to be 0.25 which I'll go through and say okay but here's what happens 
we go through and we once we do one hole all of our other points disappear and some would think we may have to go back in and redraw those points over and over again for each particular one we have and there's a feature we can use to go through and make that happen so in order to go through and to make get all of our our four other points back I'm gonna go over to hole one here in the browser bar click the plus sign next to it and see where sketch two is consumed by hole one so I'm going to right click on sketch two and I'm going to use an option to say share sketch so as soon as you do that you'll notice a sketch two will show up right above hole one and then you get all four of your points back so from here now it's just a matter of going around we're going to go around clockwise in this part and try out different our different hole features here's a counter board hole and they go through and they show you through some of the different features that they have so looks like the size of the counter bore at the top so you'll notice that it has a has a larger head at the bottom and drilled down to a certain distance and then it then the rest of the hole is drilled all the way through so it's allowed to go through and to have the like any screw heads or bolt heads to go through and to sit even or flush with the top of the part so as i take a look i can go through again i'll have to hold control select my point my next point that i want click the hole feature counter bore shows up right down here it will be a through through all designation they had 0.75 for the counter bore diameter 0.25 distance down and then 0.375 for the diameter going out and as you can see as you adjust those holes it'll go uh, the dimensions for the hole the hole will also size up or down and change some of the features after I'm done I'll go through and say okay and then I can keep going around and selecting my other my other points. So my next point, I will go through and take a look at creating a countersink hole. So diameter of 0.75 by 82 degrees and 0.375 diameter. So my hole feature countersink is this bottom option, 0.7582 and 0.375. So I'm just going to verify my dimensions. Everything looks good. I'm going to say OK and then I can go through and take a look at what my next one is. So a tapped hole, so tapped hole is one that has threads in it and we'll go through and look at some different options as well. So for the tapped hole they're going to want through and have us to have ANSI unified screw threads, size of 0.25 which is a quarter of an inch and it's got 20 UNC or 20 threads per inch and it's a coarse thread which is designated by UNC. So as I go through select my point again and then I'll go through and choose the whole feature. This one here is a little different. I'm going to choose a regular through hole in this case, but now I want to go through down here at the bottom. If I kind of leave my mouse over there, the third option before I hit, hit OK would be, say, tapped hole. And then the tapped hole, once mine will, will load, when I choose that, it's going to load a little menu down toward the bottom to showcase some different features. So by thread type. We're going to keep it as ANSI unified screw threads. Size of the hole, I'm going to click the little drop down menu. Find to be 0.25. So 0.25 will show up in our listing uh, right here. And then I'll, I'll go through and double check designation 1 4th 20 UNC as they have on the document. And they do want to change our class to a 1B um, thread. Okay, right hand thread, full depth, which means that when, it, when the full depth is checked, it will go through and show that it has uh, threads that go all the way through, and I'm just double checking these menu settings. Looks like we've got everything we need for that. I will go through, I will click OK, and if you take a look even through the inside of the hole, you'll see there's some screw threads that have been cut into the part for that there. Okay, our last hole for this feature is going to be known as a clearance hole. So clearance hole, we'll go through, select our last point, click hole, and then a clearance hole is the second option here right next to the tapped hole. So when I click on that it may take a second to load, but a clearance hole is going to allow for an entire screw head to go through and pass through the object. So we're going to go through and choose just a regular through hole clearance though, 0.531 and then they're going to ask what kind of fastener do we want to go through and accept through that as well. So 0.531 
point five three one. Uh, we'll go through, and we want uh, to go through all ANSI unified screw threads. We want a hex head bolt at half an inch and it to be a normal fit. So we're going to change to hex head bolt. We're going to change to be half an inch and to be at a normal fit as well. So this goes through and allows that entire hex head bolt to slide through there and maybe to connect onto another part. So I'm going to go through and say OK. And then now that completes your different types of holes that can be created within Inventor as well. Now, as far as this sketch goes, it's still active. So if I can, I can go over here to Sketch 2 in my browser bar, right click, and take off the visibility. And then now my part has gone through and created without any sort of interference of the sketch planes or geometry we had there before.